Oh, the Legion is blistered. Ew, it's so cool. Let's go talk about him, eh? I hope you all like that intro that I thought of with the voiceover. People have been doing that for years. But yeah, today we're going to be taking a look at the Modulu series. Modu, Modu, help. In all honesty though, this new type of video that I'm doing where I go over specific series basically is starting with the Modulus series because I wanted to talk about it. I think the Bodulus series is probably one of the best series that Derf has ever made, ever. Not only has it rebirthed things like the Strife and the Long Strike, but there's also been plenty of blasters that have come out exclusively in the Modulus series that we wouldn't have thought of in a million years. We would have never thought that they would ever grace the planet with their existence. <laughs> I used to have a Modulus ECS-10, but I actually sold it because it kind of didn't work right after a while. The trigger locks just got too sensitive and the Modulus Strife was pretty much just a smaller, nicer version of it. But today we're going to go over Modulus the best that I can describe it because, oh boy, they've been doing stuff for a while. The entire route for this series comes back to three things. Three specifically, the N-Strike barrel attachment lug, the N-Strike stock attachment lug, and the N-Strike tactical rail. One of the best things about Nerf for a lot of people was the ability to customize the living crap out of your blasters and then play with the customized options. You can put whatever stock you wanted on it, whatever barrel you wanted on it, and all of the crappy flashlights that you could ever dream of. And so one day, I guess the CEO of Hasbro just said, hey... Why don't we make a blaster all about the attachments? We'll call it the modulus because of how modular it is, and we'll include a barrel that you can put more barrels on and create giant infinite barrel loops to make hilarious YouTube videos on. We'll create a stock that doesn't work but holds a magazine so people will like it for some reason anyway. We'll give you a scope that doesn't look very good and a foregrip that you will inevitably stop using because the blaster has a built-in one. Genius plan, nothing could possibly go wrong. And, um, no, nothing went wrong. It was basically the same thing as a Strife, except it was bigger and it had so many rails that you couldn't even possibly fathom how many there were without holding the blaster in person. Uh, uh, there were five. There were five rails on the blaster, but it also had a barrel attachment and a stock attachment. It was literally Hasbro saying, you like attachments, so here, have something to put all your attachments on at the same time. It was a colossal success, and even to this day, the Modulus is still a, a well-looked-on blaster. I mean, the blaster was well-received at the time, and it remains well-received to this very day. You can still try and find Modulus blasters in places, it's just a little bit outdated now because there's so many strikes free skins on the market many of them feel way better than the modulus did the modulus definitely isn't a perfect blaster i mean the grip is absolutely atrocious and the trigger feels super weird but it was definitely cool when it came out so hasbro decided i that was a great idea let's do it again but make it weird <laughs> And the next year, four more Modulus Blasters existed. I only bought two of them because the other two were, were either really bad or just really expensive. You got the Modulus Tri-Strike, the Modulus Ion Fire, the Modulus Battle Scout, and the Modulus Recon Mark II. Um, yeah! Only one of these blasters was really well received, and it was kind of jarring when it happened. The Tri-Strike had a lot going for it. Not only was it a pretty competent bolt-action uh, retaliator-sized blaster, but it also came with some of the coolest attachments we'd ever seen. This barrel shot four mega darts, and this stock shot demolisher rockets. Demolisher rockets! Did the blaster work flawlessly? No, it had a lot of problems. The smart ARs on this thing kind of suck, and the barrel rocket launcher thing was shot underpoweredly, but it basically proved what Modulus was capable of. Blasters attached to more blasters. That was what was up. As for the other three blasters, well... They just kind of existed to exist. The Modulus Ion Fire over here looks like a really cool pistol with a stock, a barrel, and two rails, but it's a sharp fire clone albeit a way better clone than the Sharp Fire originally was, with a bit of a better grip and a nicer looking design, but it was still just a Sharp Fire clone. It came with a little ammo holder that nobody ever uses, and a barrel which, albeit, looks pretty cool. But what happened to the other two blasters? Because there were two more blasters, the Battle Scout sounds cool, and the Modulus Recon Mark II, well, it's a Retaliator clone. What could possibly go wrong? 
It's a retaliator clone that was really strict with magazines on release and that left negative brand perception. The attachments included an okay looking barrel and another really short stock just like the original retaliator. So there wasn't much reason to get the blaster even after the problem was fixed after release. As for the Battle Scout, it did come with a super cool proof of concept attachment and that was it. It was a $50 10-shot clip-fed thing with N-Strike performance, and the camera that it came with didn't even shoot at 720p. It shot like 144p at 20 frames per second. It was pathetic. The camera, as I just said, was definitely a cool proof of concept, but that's all it was, a proof of concept, and it was never brought back again. I feel like Nerf could have definitely improved the camera if they worked on it more and then saved it for a later blaster or just sold it as a dedicated accessory, but you basically paid $50 for this blaster. The camera was just meant to be an accessory, and the blaster had end strike performance while everything else around it was shooting 70 FPS. So yeah, the first wave of Modulus with just the Modulus ECS-10, great. Year two, not so great, unless you count the tri-strike. So where did Modulus go from there? Year three. I'm gonna be completely honest, I barely remember anything from year three, because this was kind of the time when I dropped out of doing Nerf all the time, so I was just kind of in the midst of this gray area where I didn't know what was going on for a while. So apologies if I get the dates of these blasters wrong. But from what I understand, year three introduced this one which is really cool. Very similar to the Modulus, this was basically a strife reskin, but it was doing a few things new. Not only was it a dedicated transparent blaster, but it just, it looked great and it came with the ability to put on a rave, which you can't really see because of my lights, but trust me, it glows. It came with a cool looking invisible barrel and a clear 12 round magazine and has some of the best ergonomics I've seen on a blaster like this. This grip is wonderful. The rev trigger was super clicky and there were no locks on the trigger so you could appreciate the mechanism. It also had rails for days and when you attached barrels, there are two tiny little LEDs that would illuminate the barrel. So especially if you put the Zombie Strike Scavenger stock on there, you could have a wicked flashlight engraved in the barrel of this blaster. It was an, a magnificent idea and it sold really well on release. And then I think in the same year later, they released another one like it, which was a colossal disappointment in comparison. I think it was called the Shadow. It was basically a Magnus clone that held six elite darts and would pretty much fire them like a Magnus. It was almost the same size as the Evader, so it was a huge pistol, came with a shorter version of the Evader barrel, and no other attachments. It kind of had a rev trigger, but the rev trigger just turned on the lights, and it still had a stock, and instead it had two rails on the side, and I think two more underneath. I don't know, the shadow was really weird, and it didn't work very well, and everybody says that it jammed. And everybody was like super confused because this blaster was great, and then later they just kind of released the shadow, and it existed, and then it didn't exist, and only like five people ever talked about it, so I don't understand what the deal was. But, that's not the only thing that Year 3 introduced. With this kind of clear paint scheme, they started introducing new attachments. New revolutionary attachments. Attachments that would change the world of Nerf. But I'll get into the elephant in the room in a little bit. We're still talking about blasters, and from what I understand, that's basically all year three had to offer. So what about later on? What happened in year four? This is where I completely forget about all the dates, so I'm just going to shoot bullet points at every blaster that was released from there until the present day. We come to year four. Quite possibly the best year Modulus ever had. There were only two dedicated blasters released this year, the Mediator and the Regulator. I have neither of them. The Mediator was basically a rampage that was really small, same size as the Retaliator. And the Regulator, I call the do-everything blaster. It does everything. 
You want it to be a strife? We've got you covered. You want it to be a rapid strike? We've got you covered. You want it to shoot three darts every time you pull the trigger? Why would you want that? I don't know. But hell, we've got you covered anyway. You want attachments for days? Have three barrels. Have a stock. Have more random stuff. You might not use any of them. You might use all of them. The possibilities are endless. Who know? To this day, I don't understand why they haven't brought the selector switch back in any other blaster because it was such a good idea that it made the regulator a blaster that pretty much everybody wanted. I still don't have one. <laughs> uh, why modulus? Why is it so expensive? But that wasn't the only thing released in year four, aside from the plethora of attachments. But there were also more blasters being introduced. I say that with a few of these on the end of it. Because in one year, we got three blasters reintroduced that have existed for years, but were starting to get hard to find. For example, the Strife. They released a Modulus Strife. And I, I'm actually really happy that they did because the Strife was all of a sudden getting really hard to find. You couldn't find the original Elite Blue versions or Elite XD versions. The Battle Camo one, well, good luck finding that. And if you could successfully find the blue version that was kind of like the, the Infinite Colors, you deserve a trophy. You literally deserve a brass trophy on your dining room table for everybody to see that says, I found the Invisible Strife. Not just the Strife, but also the Long Strike was reintroduced. And... Whoa, this was not a blaster I was expecting to see again, but I'm very glad that it did because this version of the Long Strike finally brings it justice. It shoots hard. It's comfortable. It's the same Long Strike that you know and love, but with the elite performance and attachments that actually make some variance of sense. It's almost like they actually cared about this blaster. The last re-release from what I know of was the Demolisher, but they didn't release it conventionally like these two. The first time they released it, they said, Okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna dump every attachment we can possibly imagine on it at the same time and see how it overwhelms people, everybody. The Ultimate Customizer Pack was so cool and so unfindable. I still have no idea where anybody was meant to find one. They didn't carry it in stores. They didn't carry it on Amazon. They didn't carry it anywhere. I have no idea where you could get this from. But I'm not saying that to be like in a parody way. I'm being, I'm being genuine. Where was this thing being sold? I still want to know. Even though you can't get them anymore, if anybody has a clue where you were able to get these, please tell me. But for the other 99% of people who didn't know about the invisible website that carried the ultimate customizer pack, the Modulus Demolisher was released just as the Demolisher. <laughs> No weird attachments, just the same demolisher that you know and love with the modulus colors. It looks very cool. I want to get one whenever I can. And the last blaster that they ever released until present day that is in the dedicated modulus series came in year 5, 2020. They came out with the Modulus Recon Mark III. Same thing as the Recon Mark II, but... But... It had the traditional color scheme, you could put all magazines in it, and it came with attachments that people might actually like. The regulator stock came with it, I think it was like the Stealth Ops barrel, and the little mod modulus customizable shield, the translucent one that came with the, the Strike and Defend kit. Three attachments that were pretty nice, and you could get them all with this blaster. I've been avoiding it long enough. Let's address the elephant in the room. There was a gap between year three and year four where the quality of modulus attachments went up, way up, way further up than I could imagine. There were a few attachments that were just so cool that I think everybody should have them in their collection, whether they use them or not, just because they're so awesome. The zoom scope, whether or not you like the fact that it's a really expensive and kind of gimmicky scope, is it's so much fun to play with. It's like an it's like an LCD screen. You feel like a super spy when you're using it. And just like all the little tech bits that's on it. It's just it's a joy to use that attachment on any blaster that you put it on. 
As for the Chrono Barrel, ooh, ooh, I got a lot to say about that. I got a lot to say about that. But I want to address a couple other attachments first, like the stock shot and the barrel strike and the storage stock and the storage shield. Those attachments are actually pretty cool. The storage shield, I have one of them, is actually a nice middle ground shield. It's not too big, it's not too small, and it looks like Swiss cheese, so if you want to put darts in it, you can, but please don't, that's not good for the darts. The stock shot was basically a blaster that created a stock. It wasn't the best thing ever, but it was definitely a cool proof of concept. The barrel strike was basically that, but a lot more stable, and you attached it to the barrel instead of the stock. And the storage stock was an adjustable stock that you could put things in. Like, really cool, fun, gimmicky attachments that anybody could enjoy using. The mediator attachments, because the mediator did come with dedicated attachments, but you had to buy them separately, had their own gimmicks in it. You're probably thinking, why would you have to buy attachments separately for a blaster that's supposed to be dedicated in them? Imagine if you had to buy the tri-strike stock and the tri-strike barrel separately. It, it's a good idea. I'll go over that in a moment, though. The mediator was a $20 blaster. The Mediator stock was a $25 stock. Okay, the stock is already exceeding the price of the blaster. The barrel thing that came with the Mediator, or the Mediator barrel, was a $15 thing. So let's do some mad calculations here for a second. 20 plus 25 plus 15. That is a $60 blaster. If you are going to get that $60 blaster just for the barrel, just for the blaster, or just for the stock, you're going to be wasting a lot of money. If you just want one of those things, just get the one thing. You don't have to waste all your money on the other stuff if you're not going to use it. That's why it's a good idea. As for the mediator attachments, yeah, they're pretty cool too. The mediator stock is a big stock that comes with a blaster that can hide inside of it. The mediator barrel is basically the same thing that is attached to the front of the moto blitz, but as a separate panel thing. Uh, yeah, the attachments are cool. Now, this whole video has come up to this point. This is the reason I made this video in the first place at all. The Chrono Barrel. This thing changes so many things about the way that we use blasters that it's almost unfair to have it in your collection. It basically is a slap in the face to anybody who has bought a professional chronograph. This is not only a professional chronograph that can attach directly to your blaster, but also a fully functioning ammo counter as well. The chronograph is consistent and accurate, and you can pick this up for $15. Professional chronographs cost hundreds of dollars, and you can't attach a professional chronograph to your going Nerf Blaster. You can attach this to anything that has a barrel attachment. Anything. Literally anything. This barrel single-handedly opened the world of Nerf reviews to hundreds of people who couldn't afford to invest in a professional chronograph because now you can give accurate Nerf dart ratings for 15 bucks. Not just that, but it looks cool. It looks nice and sleek and it fits on your blaster and it's got a tactical rail so that you can attach even more crap to it. The affordable price, the good looks, the way that it opens up nerf reviews to more people and everything else about the Chrono Barrel makes this the best attachment they've ever made. Seriously, the best attachment they've ever made. And you can get it for $15. It's so cool. And I think everybody needs to have one of these if you use Nerf blasters at all. If your blaster has a barrel attachment, you need a chrono barrel. You really do. Please get one, please. But that is pretty much all I have for this video. I decided I was going to try something new for today. Sorry the video is so long, but I had a lot of stuff to go over today. I want to do more series videos in the future. It's just going to be difficult to compress the videos down so they're not hours long, especially for things like the Elite series or the Zombie Strike series. But with that said, if you did enjoy this, subscribe. Tell me in the comments that you enjoyed it so that I have motivation to do things like this again. I love Modulus, and I'm glad I was able to talk about it today. So yeah, subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed, comment down below. What do you think about the Chrono Barrel? What is your favorite Modulus Blaster? And what series review should I try and look into next? I'll see y'all next time. Bye.